Hey there all you cool cats and kittens. Welcome back to another Swift tutorial with Carol Baskin. No, just kidding. Uh, for all of you who haven't seen the Tiger King, you're probably super confused by my really bad joke. Uh, but anyways, welcome back to another Swift tutorial. Today, we're going to be looking at another Firebase thing, and specifically Remote Config. So Remote Config, uh, as the name implies, allows you to remotely configure your app and do a bunch of cool things. So here you see we launched the app and have a blue view, and we have this value here for shows new UI. And if we actually update this to be false, and we go ahead and save this, uh, and you'll see once we close and reopen the app that we'll get a red view. And sometimes it takes a few seconds to go into effect, but there we go. Close and reopen the app, and now we no longer have that blue view, we just have the red view. So this is what we're going to be figuring out how to set up. It's super great for A-B testing and uh, controlling your app remotely. So that said, make sure you absolutely destroy that like button down below. Uh, helps out the YouTube algorithm, helps get this video to as many viewers uh, that want to see it. Um, subscribe if you're new, get Xcode ready, let me stop making bad jokes, and let's get into it. Alright, let's get started by creating a new project. We'll stick with a single view application. Call this my config. Save it on our desktop and let's jump right in. So the very first thing we want to do is bring in the Firebase uh, SDK through CocoaPods. So let's open up terminal, CD into the project and do a pod in it. And if you don't have CocoaPods installed or don't know what they are, I've got a separate video on that. Do a open pod file. And we want to bring in two things. The first thing is the actual core Firebase stuff, which is Firebase slash core. Pretty uh, original name Firebase gave it. The other thing we want to bring in is remote config. Uh, the reason you all are watching this video. Make sure you lowercase the P. Close text edit, do a pod install, and we'll see a bunch of stuff will get installed right here. So once this is all done, we can close this Xcode window with the command W, and we can open up the name of the project.exe workspace. All right, so now we need to jump on over to the Firebase console, and in the console we can set up our uh, Firebase app instance, uh, before we do that, let's just select the simulator and hit Command R to have this be compiled when we get back here. So in the Firebase console, you can head on over to firebase.com, sign into your Google account. We'll create a new application. Let's call this Firebase. Actually, let's call this Remote Config Test. Hit the button to continue. Pretend like you read all of this. Hit that to continue. Select a default account for Google Analytics, continue, and while it's setting up the project here, let's go ahead and stop this since it's compiled now. Go to the project navigator, copy the bundle ID. Let's also expand our console here to make it a little bigger. Head back to the Firebase website, and it's almost done. We can hit this to continue now. We want to add an iOS app, so let's hit that, paste in that bundle ID we just copied. We can leave both of these blank, hit the button to continue. Most importantly, we need to download this Google services plist file now and drag it into the project as it shows here. Put that on your desktop, hit next a few times to skip all of this since we're doing it right now. And now it's waiting for our app to communicate to the Firebase console. So let's go ahead and drag this file into the project. Head to your app delegate. Import the Firebase app framework, the very top. And an application did finish launching before the return statement. You can do Firebase app dot configure. And now we can run the app with the command R. So sometimes it takes a couple seconds for the app to communicate with the Firebase backend. Um, what I suggest people do after leaving it running for a second or two is delete the app from your simulator, 
uh, clean your project with a command shift K and rerun it. So let's delete it, clean with the command shift K. We might see an error pop up here uh, like that. Sometimes you can ignore that. So now let's hit command R again. It'll freshly build the app and freshly install. And actually, we actually didn't even need to do it. It actually picked it up with the check mark before we did it. Um, so let's hit this blue button to continue. And now let's get into the meat of remote config, which is the interesting stuff. So as I showed in the very beginning of the video, we can use remote config to remotely configure, you guessed it, uh, values and use those values in our app to do interesting things. So we're going to go to the view controller and let me stop running the app up here. We're going to go to the view controller and similar to the example from the very beginning of this video, we're going to create two views and this will be a UI view and it'll create a view. It'll have a background color of system red. And let's be lazy and copy and paste this and call this view two system. Let's do blue system blue. And both of these by default are going to be uh, hidden. And the reason they're hidden is we're going to use the remote configuration value to show or hide one or the other. So now that both of these views are created, we want to add them as sub views. So add view one, view two. Let's override view did layout sub views, call super. And let's say view one dot frame is view dot bounds, copy and paste. And view two is also view dot bounds. But keep in mind they're both hidden. So now let's create another function and let's call it fetch values. And of course in here we're going to fetch the values. Let's call fetch values. And let's set up the actual fetch functionality. So of course we need to import Firebase remote config. What I like to do is create a global variable in here called remote config and it is going to be remote config dot remote config and this is such a big pet peeve of mine of why Google named it this way the general convention is to be remote config dot instance but uh, whatever I'm not going to complain um, so now we want to actually use a remote config to fetch a value so it's probably not a bad idea to set up a value in our console so let's go to the console under the grow tab or grow section, we want to come down here and click on remote config. And it gives you a bunch of information about what this is. There's a pretty nice video you can take a look at. But we want to basically add a key and a default value. So the key we're going to use is shows new UI. The value we're going to give it by default is false. You can hit enter. And then let's come up here and hit this button to save and commit this value. So now it's in the Firebase uh, cloud and we can actually fetch it. So fetching values is pretty simple, but there's some important concepts you guys need to understand. So the first concept is uh, in scenarios where the user doesn't have internet or something, uh, we need to set up defaults that can be used offline. And once a user, once your app actually does fetch new values, we need to activate those values with another function called the Firebase gives us. And the reason is, as you can imagine, if our user is interacting with our um, view one and we fetch the value and it comes back in like three seconds, and now we can show view two, it's a pretty bad user experience if we just swap it. Um, so we need, we need to have our app handle it a little more gracefully. So Firebase puts in barriers with this activate function you guys will see in just a second. So to fetch our, um, rather before we fetch actually our values, let's set up those defaults. So we're gonna create a uh, dictionary, which will be a string and NS object. And the string will be the key. The object by default will be false. 
And we can say remote config set defaults, defaults. And actually the other super important thing, which I haven't mentioned yet, and this should be lowercase because it's our instance variable up here. Um, but the other thing that I haven't mentioned yet, which is really important, is the notion of caching. So uh, the recommended way that this gets implemented in a production application is you fetch the values um, one time and you cache them. And Firebase gives you the ability to set a timeout or an expiration. So let's say we fetched the value seven days ago. Now we know, okay, it's been seven days, let's fetch a new value. And the reason is, is because imagine an application with 10 million users, and if you're fetching it every single time the app launches, uh, the Google backend will get severely burdened with tons of requests. So it's this notion of cache the values and update them infrequently. So that said, for development, we're going to fetch a new value every single time the app launches, so we don't have to sit here for two days while we write our app. So to set up those intervals, we are going to say settings are remote config and let me spell this correctly, settings. And there is a minimum interval. It'll be zero. And we're going to say remote config, config settings is settings. Now we want to actually fetch our uh, value. So we are going to say self dot remote config. And the one that I like to use is fetch with the expiration. So this one. So for testing, it'll be zero. Uh, whatever it gets cached, uh, whatever gets cached on the fetch will get expired right away. So every time we open the app again, it'll fetch again. In a real world example, similar to what I explained, we would do something like, let's say this, which would be the seconds in one day. But let's stick with zero. The completion. Uh, we'll return a status and error. In here, we can say if status is success and error is nil, we can continue. Otherwise, let's print out something went wrong. Now, before we could actually use the value, like I mentioned, we need to activate it. And again, activation is present, so uh, you can more tightly control what happens in your app when the new value is fetched. So to activate, we can say self dot remote config. And the one I like to use is this one, activate with the completion handler. And this also, of course, might have an error. So error in. And we're going to say guard error is nil. Make sure nothing goes wrong. And now we can get the value. So the value is self dot remote config, config value, whoops, let's see, config value for our key, and this is the key we also entered on the console, and we know that we expect a boolean back, so we're going to say bool value, and for now, let's just print out this value. Cool, so let's hit command R to build and run, and let's see what happens. So as we expect, we get false down here, which is cool, kind of, but we also have false setup in this defaults thing. So what would be cooler is if we came here and updated this to be true, make sure you hit this button to save your changes, and let's rerun this. And now we get true down here. Awesome. So we got the fetch working. Let's actually hook it up to this view one, view two to get something meaningful and visual out of this fetch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let's create a new function, and we will call this update UI, new UI with a bool. And we're going to say, if new UI, we're going to show uh, view two. Otherwise, we're going to show view one. And I probably should have named this better, but let's see. View 2, I believe, is red. Uh, no, view 2 is blue and view 1 is red. So let me just put that in a comment here so we can make sure 
um, we're looking at it correctly. So view two is blue and view one is red. Let me double check that. So red and blue. Okay, perfect. So now when we actually get a returned value from the fetch, we want to call this update UI. So we can simply come in here and say self dot update UI pass in the value. And we also want to call this function before we fetch uh, with this default business, because uh, as you can imagine, if the user doesn't have internet or something, uh, there's no way this fetch is going to return. So we want to show some default state. So we're going to say update UI with false because we know the default is false. Uh, alternatively, you can actually fetch out the or pull out the direct value from the cache, but we can just put false. And lastly, we need to wrap this function call uh, in a main thread call. So threading is super out of scope for the purposes of this video, but you can simply wrap it in a dispatch queue main async like so. So let's run and we still have true over here and we're saying uh, true is new UI, so we should see the blue view. So let's hit command R and we get the blue view. But if you saw there, we had the red for a second. And the reason is, is we first had the red, uh, we called called this function with false, which would set the red one. But now if we do this again, you'll see that it is red. And the reason that it's still red is because when you fetch um, from this remote config, let's actually put a print here so you guys can see it. Whoops. Basically, it's not going to come into this activate block because under the hood, Firebase has already cached that value. And what it expects you to do is use that value for your configuration. There's no need to redundantly call this. So what we need to do to fix this is take this, put it up here, and we want to just pull out what the cached value is and use that in here instead of hard coding it to be false. Because you might not have internet as a user, but if you've previously gone through this with internet, you have a new cached value on the device. So now we should see the blue view like so. So it's not going to actually come down here and we can ignore this warning. It's just yelling at me because my print might be nil. Um, but let's go over here and change this to be false. Hit this to save. And now we expect this to be not the new UI, AKA the red view. Hit command R. And sometimes it takes a couple of seconds to go into effect. So hit it one more time. And now we have our red view. So we start off with the blue view because we have this set to be true. And now we have the red view. So we can actually not even uh, use command R to run it. We can just simply close the app here. And if we go ahead and change this back to be true, save, wait like three seconds for it to apply. Make sure it's closed out of your multitasking, open it up. And now we're on the blue view. So yeah, that's basically how to use remote config to, you guessed it again, remotely configure uh, things in your app. It's really good for A-B testing. It's good for different UI. It's good for just a whole slew of things that you could think about accomplishing. So uh, if you haven't done so already, smash that like button down below. If you had any issues, any errors you've got, uh, throw them in the comments. I will try to respond to every single comment. Subscribe if you're new. Try to post daily. Uh, some great Swift tutorials, some other tech thoughts along the way. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.